Hey guys, welcome to the createyou101.com channel. Today's episode, we're going to go over how to change the photos that are displayed in the film strip in Lightroom Classic. Uh, there's a few different options to do this. We're going to start off over here on the left hand side in the catalog and folders panel. One of the ways that you can do this is by clicking on any one of these uh, sources over here. What that's going to do is it's going to show you all of the photos that are inside of that folder. Um, another way to do it is with the library filter bar up here. And the way to show that or hide it is by using the backslash key on your keyboard. That shows and hides it. If you're in loop view, it won't show, but selecting the backslash key will switch you over to grid view and present you with the library filter bar. And again, you just hide that by clicking the backslash and unhide it by reclicking it. Um, Inside of the library filter, the different options you have are filtering by text, by attributes, and attributes are what is known as flags. Uh, you can have any flag status, you can filter based on um, picks and not picked. You can fil filter by edits or filter on any edit status. You can filter by ratings here, one, two, three, four, and five stars. You can also filter based on colors uh, when you have photos with color labels here. And then you can filter by kind, by master photos, virtual copies, and you can also filter by uh, videos. You also have the option of searching through metadata that's uh, shown in the folder that you've got selected over here. So let's say we have that. Let's go to a different folder here where we've got a little bit more uh, metadata in here. So we can go and search through here and we can look at dates the photos were taken, the camera that was used, the lens that was used to take those photos, and then any labels that they may have, whether it's blue, green, unlabeled, photo, uh, unlabeled. And then you have custom filters here where you can use camera info, and you can ch you, then you're going to be able to look through here by different focal lengths, um, flash states. You go into default columns, you're just looking at labels, lenses, camera, and date. And then if you go to exposure info, you'll be able to see focal length, the ISO speed, the aperture, the shutter speed. And you can also go ahead and change these columns. You can say, okay, I want this one to be flash state or I want this one to be my ISO. And you can change those around to however you would like them to be. Uh, it's totally up to you, it's, this is all preference. Um, you can turn all the filters off, and that takes you over here to none. You can also go and filter by flag photos. So we don't have any photos that are flagged here. You can go by location columns. None of these photos have any location data in them yet, so there's nothing showing there. You can go by ratings, uh, you can go by photos that are unrated, and then you can you can create presets so you can save the current settings, the way you have this set up right now, whatever the um, fields are that here that you selected, then you can go ahead and save those as a new uh, preset, you can delete presets, you can rename presets, and you can also restore it back to defaults. Uh, in that area there, and then here, right here. So here you can lock this, and what happens is if it's locked, the filter does not disable when you're changing sources. So that's going to keep those filters in place every time you select a new source over here. Um, another way that you can do this is by going over here to the right hand side into your keyword list panel, and you have all the different keywords that you've ever assigned to a the photos here and there's something to notice here is that okay so you have this checkbox that adds that keyword to the selected photos but if you click the right arrow that shows all the photos that have that keyword so be careful because if you're looking at a group of photos and you don't want to add that keyword to them do not click that box uh, if you want to go say click on military it's going to show you you know photos that you have that are have the keyword military in there. So that's one way you can do that here inside of the keyword list. 
And then another option that you have here is by going through your metadata. And there are a few of these um, little arrows here. So this will show all the photos in that folder. And then if you go down here, you're going to look and you're going to show photos taken on that date. And then if you go down to the ISO, you'll show photos with that ISO rating. And then here you can also show photos that have been taken with that lens. Now, another way that you can do that here is by going over here and going through, um, where do we go? Uh, right here, sorry. Okay, so there's this also this little drop down arrow and the uh, toolbar down here. And don't confuse this with the filter bar. This is the toolbar. This up here at the top is the filter bar. Even though there are filters here, this is where you apply these filters. And up here is where you can sort by these filters. Um, I think that's probably the best way to think about it. So here in the, in the uh, toolbar, you have this little drop down. And if you click on that, you'll see that you can see all photographs. You'll be able to search for quick collections that you've created. You can just go easily back to your previous import. And then it also shows you all of the recent sources of photos that you've been looking at. So you, you know, you see all these recent sources that we've used. You can also take one of these recent sources, say for instance, the Minneapolis one, and you can add it to favorites. And what happens then is it shows up here as a favorite source. So that's uh, pretty easy. Say for instance, you have um, photos that you are labeling with a certain color filter that you wanna easily be able to access all the time. You can just kind of um, add those to a folder and then label that folder whatever you want. And then you can create that as a favorite if you'd like. Uh, as you can see, I don't really use that too much here because it's just not really something that works for me, but it may be something that works for you. And if that's the case, then go ahead and do it. Um, if you wanna get in depth into understanding the entire uh, workspace layout here, go ahead and click on the little card that pops up at the top there, and that'll take you over to a video that we did on the uh, Lightroom interface. And if you found some value here, please go ahead, click subscribe to the channel down there and appreciate you. We'll see you next time.